when the intellect of the solitary attains some small degree of dispassion. It mounts the horse of self-esteem and immediately rides off into cities, taking its fill of the lavish praise accorded to its repute. But by God's providence, the spirit of unchastity now confronts it and shuts it up in a sty of dissipation. This is to teach it to stay in bed until it is, it is completely recovered, and not to act like disobedient patients who, before they are fully cured of their disease, start taking walks and baths, and so fall sick again. Let us sit still and keep our attention fixed within ourselves, so that we advance in holiness and resist vice more strongly. Awakened in this way to spiritual knowledge, we shall acquire contemplative insight into many things, and ascending still higher, we shall receive a clearer vision of the light of our Savior. I cannot write about all the villainies of the demons, and I feel ashamed to speak about them at length and in detail for fear of harming the more simple-minded among my readers. But let me tell you about the cunning of the demon of unchastity. When a man has acquired dispassion in the appetitive part of his soul, where shameful thoughts cool down, within him, this demon at once suggests images of men and women playing with one another and makes the solitary a spectator of shameful acts and gestures. But this temptation need not be permanent, for intense prayer, a very frugal diet, together with vigils and the development of spiritual contemplation, drive it away like a light cloud. There are times when this cunning demon even touches the flesh, inflaming it to uncontrolled desire, and it devises endless other tricks which need not be described. Our insensitive power is also a good defense against this demon, when it is directed against evil thoughts of this kind. Such power fills the demon with fear and destroys his designs. And this is the meaning of the statement, Be angry and do not sin. Psalm chapter 4, verse 4. Such anger is a useful medicine for the soul at times of temptation. The demon of anger employs tactics resembling those of the demon of unchastity, for he suggests images of our parents, friends, or kinsmen being gratuitu gratuitously insulted. And in this way, he excites our incisive and sense of power, making us say or do something vicious to those who appear in our minds. We must be on our guard against these fantasies and expel them quickly from our mind, for if we dally with them, they will prove a blazing firebrand to us during prayer. People prone to anger are especially liable to fall into these temptations, and if they do, then they are far from pure prayer and from the knowledge of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The word appetitive has an asterisk next to it. So I'll look it up in the glossary. I know that I've read from the glossary under this entry in a prior video. So I'll briefly say something about the appetitive aspect of the soul or the soul's desiring power. Epithemiticon, one of the three aspects or powers of the soul, according to the tripartite division formulated by Plato, and on the whole accepted by the Greek Christian fathers. The other two are, first, the intelligent aspect or power, uh, logisticon, and second, the insensitive aspect or power, thymikon which often manifests itself as wrath or anger, but which can be more generally defined as the force provoking vehement feelings. The three aspects or powers can be used positively, that is, in accordance with nature, and as created by God, or negatively, that is, in a way contrary to nature and leading to sin. For instance, the intensive power can be used positively to repel demonic attacks or to intensify desire for God, but it can also, when not controlled, lead to self-indulgent, disruptive thought and action. The appetitive and insensitive aspects, in particular the former, are sometimes termed the soul's passable aspect, 
that's the Qigong. That is to say, the aspect which is more especially vulnerable to pathos or passion, and which, when not transformed by positive spiritual influences, is susceptible to the influence of negative and self-destructive forces. The intelligent aspect, although also susceptible to passion, is not normally regarded as part of the soul's passable aspect. 